Today, I'm going down to Okeechobee and I'm visiting my friends, Jerry Wolf and Kagan. We're gonna give them some plants. We're gonna take a look at some ants. At the end of this video, I'm getting in one of my favorite freshwater fish of all times, and he's huge. I can't wait to show you. This is incredible. All right, so. So, this right, this is ficus, ficus triangularis variegata. And oh, these, are, these right here are all for you. So this is a really is cool amazing. plant. So during the pandemic, these suckers were going for like 50 bucks a piece. And then, and then the market kind of dropped out. These are so beautiful, Tom. They're super cool. I, I think they're, they're not really fast growing and they're, you can, you can trim them, you can shape them. Yeah. You can turn them into small trees, bonsais, whatever you want to yeah. do. I see a butterfly bush. Yeah. This is Claridentia. This is Claridendron. This is the pagoda flower. The, yeah. um, it's one of my favorites to give that little jungly look. She, okay, she's gonna get all of these. All right. And the bigger ones in the back, is that Colocasia? That is Colocasia Thai Giant. Holy cow. So I've got you a whole tray of um, slightly smaller ones. <laughs> those look giant to me. <laughs> no, 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 those aren't those, but I'm gonna get you a little smaller. Okay. But I got you like a whole tray of 18. Awesome, very cool. Very, very cool. I know those kind of bring that bit of a Jurassic Park look to everything, which is something that we love. This. Come on, Pete. Okay. Yep, take that, take that. There we go. Take all these. Yeah, take out, uh, give her three of those. These are cordy lines. Mm -hmm. It's gold stripe, so it's really cool. I, I, it's um. Look at the border on the leaves. I grew this myself. I bought the cuttings from Guatemala because you don't you don't normally see this one. It's a no, little bit different. That's beautiful. Okay, so give her five of these, Caesar. Five of the five of these. Now can you find the whole tray? The whole tray of colocasia. Those right there can get eight feet tall and eight feet wide Holy cow. and they can get that pretty fast yeah. like, like um, before Christmas wow that's incredible do you need a little moisture a little moisture and um, you know what I'm I gonna was... give you give her one of the big ones too I was gonna say the yeah get one of the one of the three gallons because Jerry asked for grass and I really don't have grass so we recently it... finished the quail enclosures and we've been looking for more little plants to put in there with them or even behind it to kind of create a barrier so that they have a little bit more hiding space so they don't feel so exposed that that would be amazing for them oh look at that guy you go from that size to that size is only 30 days jeez boy That's sees it looks like there's a lot of plants in here <laughs> um. <laughs> caesar's like what <laughs> Here, give her like three of these. Can you give her three of these? That's Missouri. Missouri. And this is a night bloomer. It has these great big white softball size flowers. You dig in the soil like mm -hmm. that. There's already fertilizer in here. Oh, awesome. So you just dig in here and then you put the pot here. Yeah. So water level, would you say about even? With oh, the no, no. The it? water level, I would say up to two feet over the top of the pot. Oh, wow. Okay. So it can be pretty submerged. Now I can go in and clear a lot of this grass out of the way and plant it wherever you would recommend. It doesn't really, more sun the better. So if you know the direction the sun goes, that would be really good. Okay. Where you would enjoy it, you know? Yeah. So the closer to the deck, the better. You know, it'd be really cool if Jerry could figure it out, because a lot of people ask. A lot of people have deeper ponds, yeah. right? So if there was any way you could make something that's buoyant, where the um, the bucket would float. Yeah. But that can't float on the surface. It has to be, I need six, you need six inches of water over the top right. of the pot. Right, and then it could kind of travel around the pond? Yeah, or you could just put a put a tether on it to the deck yeah. and just kind of push it out there 20 feet or something. Yeah. So it could, it could swing all around here. See if the brim want to eat. There is some uh, bass in here as well. We have seen some tilapia. We actually caught a big tilapia out of here and had it for dinner one night. <laughs> so a while ago, 
Tom, the plants that you had given me to put in a gecko enclosure. This is how it's doing. These guys have really grown up. I actually have to trim these every couple of weeks because they get so tall. Um, how hard is it to find the gecko? How many geckos are in there? There's two, and they're actually both. Oh, I see them. They blend in with that rock really well. And what type of gecko is that? Those are Halmahera geckos. They're also known as the poor man's lychee. Half the cost of a lychee gecko, but get really, really big, just like a lychee. These guys have just absolutely taken off. I mean, they're stretching across oh, the Oh, that's enclosure. the polonia there, yeah. Yeah, they're beautiful. Some of the Hoya is traveling across the enclosure. I've got some more in the back. How much care is it? How much maintenance is this right now? Not a lot. So it is bioactive. There's um, springtails in there that help break down and eat the waste that they produce. I don't worry about fertilizing anything. Um, basically the only maintenance I have to do is every once in a while trimming the plants back because it'll, it just flourishes with that grow light in there. And then of course feeding the animals twice a week. So I usually keep a little thing of super worms in there. Okay. Me. And then twice a week, I also give them the uh, Rapashi fruit mix, which is like a fruit smoothie mix for geckos. But yeah, they're really simple and they're really fun. What do you think, Boba? You should be full from your meal yesterday, huh? white throat monitor. So white throat monitors when they're younger are notorious for being incredibly food motivated. So unlike Boba who I was able to pick up and handle with ease, this guy would easily go in for a bite and not because he means to be aggressive, but white throats in the wild want to grow as quickly as they can because they're always in competition for food with the other monitors. So all he wants to do is eat, eat, eat and grow, grow, grow. So you can see him right now. He just oh, did he? Oh, yeah, look at that. Huh? He wants to eat, even though yeah. he just ate yesterday. <laughs> These are Bino Asian water monitors. Now, when I visited in the spring, how many did you have back then? Oh, geez, we had, I think, around 14. Did you really? Wow. Now we're down to only a select few. Now, the biggest ones in, in the clutch, right? A clutch is what they're called? Mm -hmm. The biggest ones in the clutch, uh, do those end up having the bigger genetics? Do they tend to be the bigger monitor? Yeah, so you can actually see this animal was born in January. Uh huh. This animal was born in February. This animal was born in January. So these two are the same age, yet this one is bigger than the one that is technically now, older. These are smaller than the ones I saw at um, the Daytona Beach show, right? Actually, this, this guy right here was one that came to Daytona. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. He's got some really awesome color on him. I call this one Ghost because he's so much paler in color than the others. The others have those really yellow ocelli on them, but this guy is really like paled out. I think he's just so beautiful. Now, Kagan, yes. about cages. 
So these here are in much smaller cages than you have built out there. How do you know what goes in the big cage and what goes in here? On whether or not albino water monitors can get sunburn or not, and if sun exposure is rough on them. I know that Ty Park has one that he does keep outside, but it's kind of in a more shaded area. We are actually getting ready to transition these guys outside. One of the biggest things is that the dirt so easily stains them and that mud we have back in the enclosures is so dark and rich that it just stains the monitors. It makes them black. Um, these guys would turn nothing like their true colors if we put them outside. We just got an order of sand, so we have a big load of sand in the back. We're going to try putting them on sand to see if they can maintain that brilliant color. Well, you got 2% of it. and he'll happily eat it out of the dirt. <laughs> He's a goober. Jeez, Onyx. See how big his feet are. Make a good drum, Onyx. He'll come right on out. Do you like the raw eggs, Alexander? He might be a hard-boiled kind of guy. He likes smelling shoes. Um, shoes tell him where all you've been. He's curious like a dog. You're welcome to give him a pet on his back too if you want. Eat babies. <laughs> Pretty big lizard, huh? Yeah. <laughs> they love going up and down these hallways and getting to walk. It's really great exercise, not only, but it's enriching for them to have something else to smell other than just what's normally in their enclosure. Plus, he kind of gets to visit with all the other lizards that are behind those doors without having access to them. Do you ever let them out in the yard? Not yet, but we will soon have the rabbits out of this play area up here. And once that's done, this whole front area is going to be for them to run around in. Well, I just got this fish in. It's one of my dream fish. I told people I was looking for it, and um, I normally wouldn't have taken it with a broken arm, but I don't know how often these become available, so I grabbed it. Let's take a look. I think this is the one that's finally gonna have the fish. He is, you see that? A 14 inch or 15 inch MBU puffer. Again, I'm not always a fish expert. I'm taking aquarium water, I'm gonna put it in this big cooler and acclimate the fish.
We will see you next week, and don't forget to like and subscribe.